Thank you. So I ask um, Ruben to come up and uh, the first one to come up and, and tell us about the Banks Peninsula Community Board and what they've been up to. Thank you. She's all yours. Thank you. Uh, Mori Nakoto, I'm Ruben Davidson. I'm the chair of the Te Pātaka or Rākai Hotu Banks Peninsula Community Board. We've had a um, very busy start to the term and a very busy start to the year, so it's really good to be able to share some updates with you all this morning. You'll see here there's a photo of the board all looking very serious in Littleton, and then there's a slightly less serious version of us on our board induction trip. Um, on a boat, and um, a big thanks to the staff who joined us and also councillors Temple Templeton and Donovan who also were able to join the board. Um, stand by for an invitation to part two this month, which will take in Akaroa and some of the bays. Um, moving into decisions that were made under delegation, uh, there was a reserve land exchange in uh, Okiti Valley with a net gain, so we we made our ward a little larger. Um, there's also a lease granted uh, to the Naval Point Yacht Club for the haul out, um, and those will be some slightly enhanced facilities to better manage the environmental impacts. Uh, and then also we undertook the lengthy exercise of board appointments. Lengthy because there are more than 60 appointments that need to happen, shared between eight board members. So the suggestion was made that potentially some of the current guidelines fail to adequately recognise the workload for Banks Peninsula Community Board members, not a new subject. Um, there is also a Part A coming to you today regarding the Birdlings Flat street lighting. Uh, this is a really big issue for the very engaged community of Birdlings Flat. Uh, the consultation from Council has been exemplary. It's involved surveys and trials over a number of years, so there's a lot of work that's gone into that. There literally was only standing room in Little River meeting, at our Little River meeting for this, so um, the board did, did agree with the recommendation. Uh, stepping into our community board plan, we are working to a really tight time frame, as are all boards. We're really lucky to have um, a, a great set of board members who are really connected with the diverse communities that they each represent across the peninsula. And our overarching principle and board commitment is meaningful engagement with Papatipu Runanga to ensure that Te Ao Māori values are at the core of all decision making for the board. As far as our community projects, the Littleton Youth Group Pool Party has gone ahead, which is excellent, and that's with some great support there from our LPC. And Hydra size classes, um, sounds like a lot of fun, just finished last week. This year we had a 400% increase in participation year on year. So it's an excellent example of when we repeat an activity how we can start to build a lot of support for it. Shifting into our community focus, first up, um, and I'll have to be careful how I say this, thousands of visitors to Littleton this summer. We've ha we're having over 80 cruise ships scheduled, some of which carry over 4,000 people, which is double the population of Littleton. So this is the bit I've got to be careful about. That's ship loads of people that come into Littleton and we get a lot of feedback as a result of that. Um, we do have a full schedule of public forums at our first meeting for the year in Littleton on the 13th of February and we'll share all of those with Council and Regional Council and Christchurch NZ. There's also been a fair amount of frustration and a lot of media coverage on the frequency and communication of the water testing in Whakaropo, Littleton Harbour. Uh, it highlights how many people, not just from Littleton and the peninsula, but from across the city, travel to our inner bays over summer, and the work that's needed both on the testing process and the communication of that, but also the infrastructure that will ensure our harbour health. Uh, Sail GP is looking good and construction starts in less than three weeks on the on the village down there. Traffic management will be the big issue, but there's some really solid plans and comms coming out on that. And the destination management plan uh, 
all of those issues can be managed with a good destination management plan. That's something that the board called for in its last term. We did also put some funding aside, and it's really critical that we get solid engagement across all of our communities to make sure that that's a destination management plan that looks after the environment, communities, and visitor needs to Banks Peninsula. Thank you. Thank you very, very much. That was good. Can, can you tell me, uh, and you may mention it, I may not have heard you, is uh, how's Governor's Bay Jetty coming along? Very good. Yeah. There was a, um, some great photos posted of the barge being moved into position so that that construction can, can continue. And, um, and at some stage, I'm sure they'll be happy to receive the um, dollar back to um, trade it back to being a council asset. But, you know, it's definitely underway and another example of a uh, um, super engaged community on Banks Peninsula. Thank you. I must go for a drive over there and have a look on the weekend. So, so sorry, Yanni, we're, that's all the time we've got for questions. Thank you very much for coming in. Thank you. So next we have um, Callum to come and talk to us about um, Sprayed and Cashmere Heathcote Community Board. Welcome. Uh, ko rangi nui kei runga, ko papatuanu kei raro, ko ngā tangata uh, kei wainga nui, tihei mauri ora. Kamehio ki te ranga, rangatira, tēnā koe, uh, kamehio ki ngā māngai o ngā tangata, tēnā koutou, uh, kamehio ki, ngā to, uh, ki, te, uh, ki ngā kaimahi, Hoki, tēnā rā koutou katoa. Uh, thanks for welcoming us here today. Uh, my name is Callum Ward. I'm the uh, chair of the Waihoro Spray and Cashmere Heathcote Community Board. And with me is Kia Leslie, our yeah. deputy chair. Kia ora tātou. Um, so, yeah, we're excited today to be representing a new board, freshly minted, um, covering the areas of uh, the former Spray and Cashmere ward, uh, board area and Heathcote as well stretching from Sumner to Westmoreland and the summit of the Port Hills to Fitzgerald Ave. Um, up on the screen there you can see some decisions we've made. We've had, we've had a busy few meetings already. We held our inaugural meeting in October last year and I'm not going to go through all of those lists on the, on, the, on the screen there but I'll call it board funding. We've established our community board funding pools and board project funding. Um, and that's been very satisfying, kind of get that underway, um, start to start supporting our groups again on the ground. Um, and as well as that, we'll talk more to it later, but the South Christchurch Farmers Market's been a significant one for, for our board as well. Uh, so yeah, we also had a, we had a bus trip in December last year. Um, so it was a chance for us all to familiarise ourselves with, with uh, the people and places that we represent. Um, one of the highlights for me personally was hearing from the Ihutai Estuary uh, Trust us and, um, as well as council staff around the unique place that the estuary has uh, in, in our city and in fact in the world. We're actually, we have a, a rare treasure in, in the Utah estuary. Um, it's a significant node for lots and lots of migratory bird species and um, including some very threatened and endangered species. So it's, it's a very precious asset um, that really sort of drove home the need for us to, to um, yeah, care for our environment to make sure that we're good stewards of that as a board and as a city. Um, I guess on the subject of our environment as well, Kia was going to talk to the yeah. Port Hills. I mean, as you can see, um, you can see the, the Port Hills up there, which is obviously there's a lot of community concern about fire risk on the Port Hills, um, and justifiably so, seeing some of the um, history we've had there, and particularly with changing climate, we're going to see more and more of those kind of events. So we just spoke about some of the ways the board can put communities in touch with fiends, how we can share some of that information, and what other measures we could maybe look at taking to help keep those uh, hill communities safe. Cheers. Highlighting a couple of um, proud moments for us uh, late last year. Um, so King George Fifth Reserve Community Group and Addington Farm both won uh, Kumara Awards. So the Addington Farm is a small community group that um, that the board supports um, that was honoured with a placemaking Aotearoa's Kumara Awards for providing opportunities for people to learn how to grow their own food. Yeah, do you want to talk to the George Fifth? Yeah, so uh, George Fifth Reserve is a tiny forest um, by the Pawaho, which was planted back in 1990 um, by the old Heathcote County Council, in fact. Um, and that was about um, the work that Mark Gibson's done bringing um, uh, St Martin School students and scouts into to learn how to care for this uh, taonga. Cool. 
Um, yeah, so this is, as sort of mentioned um, previously, the, the South Library rebuild's a big one for our for our board. Um, so I call it the South Library. Everyone calls it the South Library. I kind of want to make the point that it's much more than a library. It's a, it's a, it's a full-spectrum community centre. Um, you know, we've got a cafe, playground, we've got various community rooms that are rented out by lots of different groups, used by lots of different community groups. We've got a council service centre there, and it's also the seat of local government in our board area. That's where our board meets. And um, so, yeah, just kind of wanted to make that point. Um, we've, yeah, as you can see, it's been supported by Red Steel for the last decade since the earthquakes. Um, and in the meantime, our board has supported um, the rebuilds of s sort of some other community facilities w that were higher priority than the South Library, such as uh, Te Pau Tautui and the Hornby Centre. Um, but yeah, we're really excited as a ward that that um, as a board that this is the times now for the South Library rebuild. So um, we're looking forward to that. Our community's really excited about it. Um, another big key theme from our for our board is safety for active transport users and cyclists. Um, I know that, that last year on the Sprayed and Cashmere board, not a month went by that we heard from someone about road safety, especially cycle safety. And that, that's you know adults to kids trying to get to school. Um, and I wanted to kind of highlight a bit of a win in this area is the um, is the oh, all power all power village. So basically, they've just lowered the speed limit and and put in a pedestrian crossing. We've had great feedback from our community around the way that that's improved the feel of safety for pedestrians and cyclists. Um, also, just wanted to plug the uh, the the raised platform on the Lincoln Road Whiteley intersection, which although it had a bit of consternation and confusion at first from the community around the purpose of that, admittedly. Um, the feedback that we're hearing now from people, especially the local residents, is that it's just really great for pedestrians. It's massively improved the, the feel of safety in the area. And especially at the Elton John concert, um, heading into that uh, before on the Tuesday night, it was a very, very different experience than it would have otherwise been without that raised platform there. So keen for that work to, to, to continue. Yeah, yeah, just in the Lincoln Road. Yeah, so yeah, it's just... I didn't say you could speak. <laughs> Who pressed your button? <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yes. That's correct. The power one is a raised platform. It's not just a not just a, a zebra crossing. Yeah. 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 Pedestrian crossing. Yeah. So, um, Kia, do you want to talk to the South Christchurch Farmers Yeah. Market? So, so one really positive thing is we've. Uh, finally signed off the 10-year lease for the um, South Christchurch Farmers Market, um, which is uh, a real uh, South Christchurch institution, was formerly um, down the road uh, in a different ward, so it's a bit of a, bit of a coup to nab that one for Kashmir, I think. Um, uh, it's actually been, it's been really positive having it down there. It's activated Hunter Terrace in a way that otherwise it just wouldn't have been activated. Um, and... I think it's been a really positive process. Um, I'd particularly like to acknowledge, um, obviously, the market operators who have been really persistent, um, but also the Beckenham Neighbourhood Association, um, Dave Kelly, and particularly um, Mike Fisher, who has been, as a member of the community, really passionate about kind of bringing that through the council process. Um, and I'd also really like to acknowledge um, some of the property staff who um, I think it would be fair to say cut through some red tape and were able to get some stuff moving when things were maybe a wee bit jammed up in the council bureaucracy. So just to say that they had a real can-do attitude and also mm. to see council getting behind some, uh, you know, local uh, enterprise. Mm. So looking forward, um, we're, our, our community board plans are currently in development um, and we're going to carry up consultation on it early this year. Um, How's progress, Callum? How's time going with you? You nearly done? Uh, yep, yep, I'll finish here. Thanks. Um, so yeah, I won't I won't enumerate those priorities there below, but you can see some of the ones we've mentioned already. Um, yes. Yeah. So keen for any any questions. No and question. you've run out of time. <laughs> 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 but thank you for bringing up the raised platform. That really <laughs> made my day. You're very welcome. <laughs> Bridget, your turn. <laughs> You haven't got any raised platforms in your area, have you? <laughs> Not yet, apparently. Goodness gracious. <laughs> Far away. Good to see you.
Uh, so tēnā koutou katoa. So kia ora everyone. So um, Bridget Williams here from the Waimaliro Whenua Tamai Māori Hiwa Community Board and I have Jason, who is our deputy, um, who, who is joining me today to present, which is great. So for the um, first lot, yeah, we've been hitting, hit, hit the ground running with decisions made under delegations. I won't go through them all, um, but they've, you know, they've ranged from um, approved road names, uh, to um, to parking restrictions, to stopping restrictions, and to also road safety improvements. And Jason, do you want to go through the others? For sure. So just uh, approving some funding from the DRF, uh, some of our local community groups, um, Burnside Squash, Burnside Cricket Club, Papua Nui Community Toy Library, which uh, our families use quite a lot, which is fantastic. Anglican Parish, Parish of Mary of Alice and Albans, um, Belfast School, which um, the south part of Belfast has come into our ward just recently, so it's, it's good to have the, the whole of Belfast in uh, Herewood and in our, in our board area, and then FC 2011. So a whole range. Okay. So the, the board was extremely happy that we were able to go ahead with our Celebrate Bishop Dale event in November. We've had a couple of years in the past where it's been cancelled either due to high winds or just inclement weather, I guess, is the, the term for it. Um, and COVID came into it as well, and just with the cost of fencing and some of the requirements we had. The 2022 event was planned for the Saturday, but again, due to the bad weather and some of our experiences in the past, um, we had a reserve day, so it was postponed until Sunday, and the weather came good for that, which was great. So it's good to have a reserve day and actually be able to implement that to make sure the event went ahead. The event featured a number of stage performances from local groups and a wide range of activities and stalls, including bouncy castles, petting zoo, police radar gun running and face painting. There was a fantastic turnout with an estimated 4,000 people attending during the day, which is a pretty good crowd. And a huge thanks to Lisa Gregory, our lo local community recreation advisor, for her work and on organising the event. It's always really tough on her when they get cancelled in some of the years we've had in the past after mm -hmm. all the work she's put into it. So it's good to see it go ahead. Awesome. And on the same day as Celebrate Bishop Dow, um, on the other side of the park, we held the Bishop Dow Skate Jam. So this was a great opportunity to showcase our newly upgraded skate park. Uh, the event is run by the wonderful George from the Skate School. Uh, there was a really good turnout and the feedback on the new Skate Bowl has been very <coughs> positive. So a big thanks to Steve Gray and the Parks team for getting everything finished and tidied up in time for the event. At the end of October 22, over two days, uh, Rushley School, <coughs> Rushley Play Centre and the network of the Island Stream came together to plant almost 200 native plants along the banks of Island Stream at Crosby Park, which is, a, is a quite a cool wee walk and, and under there, down by the stream as well, from where the little um, pump track is for the kids and the, the main park area. This was an awesome effort from all those involved. Unfortunately, the following week, some people thought it would be fun to go and pull the plants out. Um, around 10% of the new plants were pulled out and left lying on the ground. Um, once word got out, a wonderful group of stream friends from the community came together and replanted them, which was really cool to hear about. The community partners have recently met to discuss creating a Friends of Crosby Park Island stream group with support from council staff that are currently working through the details of what this might, might look like. A further working bee was held just prior to Christmas and going forward the plan is to hopefully hold community working bees each month just to keep things um, in good shape. And a huge thanks to all those involved, particularly Karen Bogue from our local community governance team and Annalise Cookwell mills our community partnership ranger. And then uh, finally, I feel like this is a, um, a fantastic event that we always put on our calendars. Just a wee reminder that our amazing Culture Galore event run in partnership with the Horswell Hornby Rickerton Community Board is coming up on the 18th of February. So put it in your diaries now and come along for a fabulous day where you can listen to fantastic cultural performances and try out food from over 30 different countries. So that's us from the board. Thank you so much. Thank you, Bridget. And I must say that Culture Galore thing, I've been to it Oh, twice, I think now. Absolutely fantastic. So, encourage anyone that uh, that can go. So, we're 
down to six seconds. So thank you very much for coming in. You're very good. Awesome. Thank you so much. Yeah. Okay. G'day, Emma. Good to see you back. <coughs> Happy you were in the Central Community Board. Um, kia ora koutou. Thank you for having us along to present today on behalf of our Waipapa Papanoi and Central Community Board. Um, I'm Emma Norrish and I'm the Chair of the Board and this is Simon Britton, our Deputy Chair. Um, so obviously it's been a long, a long time since we've had this opportunity to present to Council, um, so there's quite a bit to cover from the last few months but we'll just run through a few um, highlights of what's happened in our meetings and tell you about a few things happening in our communities. First up, we have our decisions made under delegations uh, with a number of discretionary response fund allocations. Uh, some of these were to community groups to help with the work they're doing in our communities. Um, and we also allocated the funding for our board projects for the coming year. Uh, we have one new board project this year, which is a school civic award, uh, which we're going to offer to all schools in our area to present at the end of year prize giving. And um, we're still working out the finer details of it but we think it will be a good way of raising awareness of civics in our local schools and connecting with and recognising rangatahi in our area. Yep. Uh, so uh, we've got no um, part of oh, Part A reports. So we have a, have a report on the um, cycle lanes at Briggs, Marsh and Lake Terrace, uh, I think is on your agenda today. Uh, and there's the other reports the board there uh, is at, um, or to the council as well. Um, come through to that one. Um, so the Shirley Village project um, has been recognised for the amazing mahi they're doing in the Shirley area uh, with the signing of the community-led development partnership agreement with the Department of Internal Affairs. Uh, this is a five-year agreement providing resources, support and funding to help continue making the community's vision a reality and they're one of only a handful of organisations throughout the company who have um, got that funding so that's fantastic. Uh, also on the Shirley area, we first came and talked to the council during last term about a concept that the Shirley Community Trust had raised with us for a birdsong trail uh, in the area, and they asked for some support from council with that, uh, which was mainly in the form of uh, some advice uh, from um, Parks staff uh, and also uh, some support from the governance team. Uh, that's now in place. Uh, it's, it's moved really quickly, that one. Really pleased to see uh, some collaborative support uh, between council and the local community on that. You can see a photo on the right there from a planting day. Uh, and the vision there is to support the return of uh, native manu in that area through native plantings as tawhara trees, as well as uh, smaller bushes and things that have been planted through McFarlane Park. Uh, over 500 plants planted so far. Um, in December, the Santa Claus Workshop and Char Charitable Trust delivered a selection of handmade wooden toys and, uh, to the local community groups to be given to children from low-income families. Um, the time and effort put into these toys by volunteers uh, is hugely appreciated by our communities uh, and make a real difference to these families at Christmas, so a big shout-out to them. Uh, in Papua Nui Ward in St Albans, the Maraho Community Garden has been opened. This is a collaborative project between Green Lab and the Neighbourhood Trust, who are based at the McFarlane Centre. Uh, you can see a photo uh, there from the opening. There was a planting day and opening uh, towards the end of last year, and that garden's now online. There's uh, produce now being um, harvested and supplied to the local community from that. Um, also at the end of last year, we held our annual combined meeting of the Papua Nui and Shirley Interagency Network Groups. Um, and this was a great opportunity to, to also, also welcome um, and get to know some of the groups from the Central Ward. Um, groups were able to meet community board members, share their highlights from the year and tell us what they think the key issues are in our area which will help inform our community board plan. And then last week uh, we had our bus trip, like some other boards have already talked about. Uh, this was a great opportunity for members to familiarise ourselves with some key issues, projects and facilities in our board area. Our local staff did a really great job of squeezing lots into the day. Um, thank you also to the other council staff who came along to provide their expertise. Um, and the day also included um, speed dating with leaders of local community groups, which worked really well and was good fun. We had our Papua Nui uh, Whakaoho Community Day. Towards the end of last year, uh, that event is hosted by Papua Nui Youth Development Trust, who are at 1A Hewood Road, just by um, St Paul's. Uh, it had three or 400 attendees there with the uh, yeah, youth, youth uh, school events uh, and a whole lot of activities for whānau and for young people. 
And then finally, we're going all the way back to Halloween. Um, we had a couple of light parties in our area um, held in Shirley and St Albans, uh, which were really successful despite um, having to move inside due to the weather. And this was a great opportunity for local families to um, celebrate with costumes and heaps of activities for the children. Um, that's us. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you very much. And once again, a fantastic uh, presentation, like all the other boards as well. So right. thank you. Thank you. Okay. Helen and Marie. All right. Thank you. Horsball, Horsball Hornby Record and Community Board. Sorry, I'm just trying to hobble up. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I'm, I'm used to getting up. So. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. <laughs> right, thank you. Thank you, Yanni. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Welcome. Um, and um, particularly uh, welcome to, to new councillors. So there's a few of you here. Um, and just to say, our Rickerton Board has got, um, Rickerton Horsel Hornby Rickerton Board has got three new new councillors and three who are new um, in terms of council and three new board members. And I'm the new chair and Marie Polizzo is the deputy chair. You may also know her, some of you from the planning department. So we've got a formal planner on, on our committee. <laughs> so th there we are. Um, so we'll go briefly through this, and they're p much briefer than perhaps other wards. And then I just want to touch on a burning issue for Rickerton and Hornby in the back particular, which is, which is a current issue. So we that's our board. Um, I think we'll skim over that. Um, again, over that, uh, over that. Now, the Part A is a committee for Rapuna. We are appointing a committee member, Hank Bunk, and he's there to represent the board. It's an important committee. It came from the Environment Court in 2014. So it's a statutory committee and it's important that it works well. And as far as I know, it's worked well for seven years or so. A culture galore, you've, um, if you'd like to speak to that, Marie. Yes, um, um, this was mentioned earlier already, but I'd like to emphasize that in recent years, we've only had like a handful of um, councillors who regularly attended multicultural events. Um, this would be a good opportunity for the new term of councillors to please um, support um, multicultural events, not only in, in our board area, but um, these um, communities, multicultural communities, represent the whole of Christchurch, and we would encourage and we would love to see all of the councillors there to support this event. Okay, thank you. Now, could I just touch on one of our major projects is still proceeding, the Hornby Centre? the pool, the library and service centre. So that's, it's a bit behind, but it's, it's proceeding. Um, and Takura, the stormwater development has been developed and there's now four Ks of walking, a walking area. That's, sorry, that's my phone. <laughs> sorry about that. Um, can I just touch on w what is quite an issue f for Rickerton and to some extent Hornby? Um, in the intensification program, Plan Change 14, we've got five residence groups in um, Rickerton opposed. But the thing that's different for Rickerton compared to other wards is that there's two large shopping centres or sh two large commercial centres. And it's got to be six storeys round a commercial centre as dictated by government in 2020. It's not the medium density issue, that was done by both National and Labor, but this is high density, six storeys, around a certain area around each commercial center. 
that means that from Deans Avenue to Pear Street and from Deans Avenue to the main South Road, it's all six storeys other than a small gap around the Island Road. So basically, I'm not sure that people are aware of this high density for such a large area. So you've got potentially a concrete jungle, if you like, um, in areas which, some of which are suburban density, that's low density. So they're not going to medium density, they're going to high density. Now I'm aware that uh, you're making a call on this in March, so that's why I've brought this up. It will, it will be tabled in writing um, to, to, to staff, but I, and I don't know how you actually solve it other than to say we shouldn't be having as much high density around commercial centres, particularly if you have two centres. Something's got to shift there because it will just be it will just be awful, and that's it's destroying communities as well. And people didn't expect this to happen. So I think if it's suburban density, I don't think you should be going to high density. It should be medium at the most. Um, so that's really all, all I want to say. Thank you, And Helen. I'm sorry I'm a bit shorter on, on our board report, but I just wanted to, to touch on this that's cool. high uh, density issue. Yep. Yeah. And Sarah's got one quick question, please. Thanks. Just a quick one. Thanks, yes. Helen. Um, I know you've got the, the six residents associations, but I'm wondering if you've talked to other groups who've got an interest in intensification and, and long-term issues for the city. So um, younger people at the university... Yes. Um, Renters United, those kind of um, yes. stakeholder groups, um, as well as the residents' associations. Yes. I certainly have talked to some young people during the the, the election campaign. Um, but as a, but the board, as you know, if the board no, is listening to the, stakeholder groups the, on the, the future of the no, city, that you haven't no. talked to young people. Yeah. The board no. hasn't. But the thing, the comment I will make, because I did ring the staff. Um, government keeps saying we want affordable housing. I've said to staff, is there any evidence that this will create affordable housing? And the answer is no evidence. doesn't mean there's not evidence somewhere at university or somewhere else, but the staff didn't have any evidence that this high density will create affordable housing. It may or may not, basically. Mm -hmm. And Hornby has got the same issue around Hornby. A large tract of area is going to high density. And I think if you could do something on that and bring the high density down to medium density, I think that would be helpful. Thank you, Sarah. <laughs> and thank you, Helen. Thank you. Thank you, Marie, coming thank in you. and answering the phone. Thank you. Do you want to say anything else? <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Good to see you. Now, um, unfortunately, there is the chair and deputy chair of um, Waito Coastal, Burwood Linwood, uh, unable to be here today, so we look forward to hearing them next time so there is no presentation from them. So we will move on to the Community Board Part A's, which is item six. Birdlings. Oh, so, so that 